Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to do a slightly quicker video. Um, when I did the Chain Rasp video and had a first play around with Night Haunt Gloom, um, I said it might be kind of cool to try it on some different figures and as you can see, I've got here my Gene Steeler Cult for Kill Team. Now Kill Team is just a week out at this point, well the pre-order is anyway. <laughs> so. When that comes along, I wanted to be ready. And I had a lot of fun actually using this Nighthorn Gloom because it turns out it doesn't stay blue. If you put it straight over white like you would with the Nighthorn, you get that cool sort of off, off gray, shadowy blue kind of color. But when we put it on a gray undercoat instead, come on, there we go. We get this cool teal effect, uh, which really surprised me. So what I'm going to do, a few people have asked, how did you do your kill team? So I'm going to paint some reinforcements. I've got this fella here. He's going to be our brave volunteer. Let's get started. I've got all of the colors I'm going to use for the base coats lurking behind me here. I'll put the names for everything in the description, but we'll just go through one by one and I'll show you how I did these. Now with these guys, I'm starting from a base coat of Army Painters uh, Uniform Grey. You could use Mechanicus Standard Grey, but I'd recommend going over it with a little Dawnstone or something to brighten it up first. This is slightly brighter than Mechanicus Standard Grey, and I think that makes a difference to the overall colour. What I've got, you can grab yourself a uh, small base brush, or a shade brush even if you want to be really quick about it, and all I'm doing is just a single coat of this Nighthaunt Gloom. You'll see it goes on similarly to how a shade does. Same as it does on the old chain rasps. But all I'm doing is just going around and hitting all of his clothing. When I get close to some of the rubberized material that their, their armor is made out of, I'll just go around it. Now it doesn't matter too much if you get it on areas like uh, the tabards, you know, those sort of scraggly bits like that. But try and avoid anywhere that you're going to want to stay gray because you don't want to have to touch that up if you can avoid it. Now I've given him about 10 minutes to dry, and this demonstrates the, uh, the value of painting in batches. <laughs> if I'd painted a fifth guy now, he'd probably be ready to rock and roll. So, you know, just think about saving yourself some time and doing these guys in chunks. Whatever the case though, I've got some Ulthuan Grey, and I'm going to use... Uh, this is a large base brush that has been uh, viciously abused in my Tender Mercies. Uh, I do recommend instead, though, grab yourself a small dry brush, because that'll give you much more control. I'm just using this. I'm familiar with it. What you're going to do, though, is dry brush the whole miniature. So we're going to do all of the grey and all of that weird tealy blue that we've got. And you want to be, you know, a little more generous with it than you would think. So you see I'm going quite extreme on some of that uh, green stuff, or blue stuff, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but just making sure that you're going to pick up all of the raised areas of detail. So take your time, go around and do this now. And I mean, I'm almost finished. But let's let that set for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back and do the next colors. Then you can grab yourself your small base brush or equivalent and your Bugman's Glow. Start doing all the skin. And just by virtue of how well this covers over the gray, you'll probably find you can get away with one thin coat. And while that's drying, you can grab yourself a little bit of demon at hide. You notice I am thinning these out just a bit so that they'll flow off the brush. And any of the fabric that you want to be purple, you can paint this in now. So I'll just tilt him back so I can get under there a little more easily. And remember as always, all you want to be doing is avoiding the areas that you have already painted, but don't worry if you cover over, like say there's some chains or something there. Now you could do these little armbands. There are a few models that have these. You might want to do these in purple. Um, I'm going to do it in a, in a slightly sort of beige color later because this guy not having the shoulder pads, I want to do something brighter up there than purple. But that's for you to decide. These guys having a slightly non-uniform appearance means you're going to have a bit of fun figuring out how you want to do each individual bit. Then some lead belcher for all the areas you want to be metal. This doesn't take too long at all. Then we'll follow up with some Retributor Armor just to do any of these little cult icons. 
you're probably not going to have too many of these to do. Uh, they appear on most miniatures, but not all. So this might be one you can skip, depending on how your model looks. Then I'm going to get a little Vallejo Black Grey. Now I'm using this because it covers a little better than Ashen Grey does. Though the colors are similar, Ashen Grey is very slightly lighter. So I want this to be a just off black kind of finish. If you do want that contrast, then I suggest just use black instead of a gray, all right? Make sure I can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, along the backs of gloves and stuff like this is a good part for this, but make sure you're getting all of the little pouches and maybe just a hint of the belt or two anywhere that you need this bit of contrast. And finally on the base coat front, I've got my Rakarth Flesh. You can use any color you want here for this, uh, for this fabric. I'm just using this because like I said, no shoulder pads means I want a little bit of white contrast up here and this dirty sort of cloth will help me do that. Now after a couple of minutes when all of our base coats have had time to dry, out comes the Agrax Earthshade. I've given it a good shake and I'm going to use a nice big brush for this because oh, I've not painted like this in a while. You know, proper just on goes the shade. The whole model. <laughs> Make sure you work it into the recesses. So you do want to be a little bit more generous with this than you normally would. You'll see I'm getting, you know, very quickly it's into all those recesses like that. Let's get a bit closer. But just work around now, go over the whole model, skin, armor, everything. All right. All of the colors that we've used are going to go really well over, sorry, under this Agrax Earthshade. So I'm going to finish that off. And then because I'm putting so much on, probably going to need about 40 minutes to dry. And we'll come back and see how that looks once he's finished. Now through the magic of a little editing, we can time travel and this is what he looks like when he's dried. Now that's pretty cool. Um, honestly, you know, if I was painting an army in a hurry, I would be quite happy to base him up and put him on the table. But there's plenty more we can do from here to really make him stand out. So that's what I'm gonna do first of all. I've got my uh, Bugman's Glow again, and we'll just go in and we're gonna cover over most of those areas of skin. Might have a little bit much on my brush there. And just avoiding the recesses, same as you would paint anybody's skin. So I'm going to go around. This is a little difficult to actually do on the camera. So let's just get that shape back on his hands, his face, while avoiding the very deepest recesses. Now once that's out of the way, we've got a little bit more depth into his face. So I've got my Druki Violet, and here we're going to do two things. First off, I want to put just a little bit of this on, not as much as I've got on my brush. So let's just run some of that off. And I want to put just a little into some of the deeper recesses of his face. So in around his jawline, the ridges on his head, just paint some of this in. I might have put a little bit too much on if I'm perfectly honest, but that doesn't matter. You just pull some of that away. It might look a little mess on a camera, but uh, you'll be able to see it much better in person. Same to any of the purple cloth, just put a little bit of this over and it'll help deepen that color once it dries. Now, speaking of while that dries, we can use this time to do some other stuff to the model. So let's skip around a bit. What I've got is just some black. You can use Abaddon black or Vallejo black. Either one really doesn't matter here. Uh, and just any of these little cables, either on the outside of a suit. Uh, some of these guys will have these up quite close to their face. Let's go around now and any little areas that you want to touch it. Um, I'm being quite dainty with this because it's kind of hard to see with the camera in the way. <laughs> and while we've still got a bit of time, just a wee dot of white in on his lens. Now some of these guys will have uh, little like light bars. It doesn't matter too much. Just fill it in. It'll look fine once we shade it. Now with your small airbrush and just a little Cadian flesh tone, you'll see his face looks like a big ugly bruise at the moment. What you want to do is paint in just the highlights of his face, so along his brow, top lip, nose and all that, and these little head ridges. Just a little bit of color there to add that shape back to his face and really highlight ugh, the difference between that gross purple stuff and his, I guess, human face. Now unfortunately that's gone just a little bit bonk. Um, the temperature in here makes it quite difficult to paint a smooth line at that sort of scale. So that's on me. I really should have planned that. But if you are lucky enough to have uh, air conditioning, <laughs> not something you'll have to worry about. 
I'm just going to get a little bit of Rekar Flesh and we'll brighten up the, uh, the cloth. Just the edges of that to add a bit of contrast to it again. Now for a really quick lighting effect, just grab yourself some Cassandora Yellow and straight over the top of that. You want to use more of it than you would think you will and just drag it up towards the top of that little lamp area and as it dries you'll get a little bit of modulation in colour. And at the same point, if you fancy, you can grab yourself a little bit of Nuln Oil and just go over some of the areas of metal again to darken them down even further. Or you could use Agrax Earthshade again, it's up to you. And now against my better judgement, I'm going to try and get some Screaming Skull onto his teeth. Let's see if I can do this on the camera. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not going to push me luck. <laughs> and if you're feeling really fancy, you can even go in and highlight the purple. Just go back to your Demonet Hide, because we've put two shades over the base coat now, so this will give you plenty of contrast and just help that purple pop a little. Now just a quick note on another figure from the range, because I wanted to show you a little bit of the differences you can get on these. I've given him the, uh, the dark grey on his leather uh, gloves, but I've left the little metal panels on the back with the grey that we dry brush at the very start. His shoulder pads are literally just ultho and grey over the top of those, and then a straight line of corn red. Okay, nice and quick and simple if you happen to have those on the model. Now I've just bopped a little bit of sterling mud on his base, but now let's get a wee bit of Runefang steel, or you can use storm co uh, storm storm host storm cast storm host silver. Just a little bit of detailing on the weapon, just to make those extreme edges shine. Same too, when it was a little respirator bit, you can do that really shiny if you fancy. Then with his base complete, we have another recruit for the Children of the Haunted Gloom. <laughs> when you've got such overwrought paint names that you're using, how can you not lean into it a little bit? These guys are a lot of fun. They're really simple, and I think... You know, what I'd said about trying the Nighthaunt Gloom over different colours really worked out well for the grey. Um, I'm interested to see what it does over a red or something. But at any rate, reason why I do this now is that uh, we're just a couple of days out from the pre-order period for Kill Team. And in that boxed version of the game, you do get a kit for the Neophyte Hybrids. So you'll be able to build these guys exactly the same if you fancy. Um, I'm very interested to see how the game goes. <laughs> so I've painted my whole kill team um, a week before even the pre-order. Uh, I'm pretty keen, <laughs> if you can't tell. So hopefully, guys, you know, something there is useful to you. I quite enjoy doing, you know, a bit of a variation on this fella. And like I said, I'll uh, put up some videos, some videos, sorry, some pictures of the other ones that I've done too, so you guys can see all of them together. If you found anything interesting, of course, feel free, drop a comment in the old box below. Both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there too. And as ever, thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.